Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Chinta. I am Rajdeep and today we look at a very fresh problem. This is a problem which at the time of the making of this video only came out yesterday. It's a problem from the IIT joint uh admissions for masters test, the IIT Jam 2025 for mathematics test which happened on 2nd February which at the time of making of this video is only a day old and the question paper isn't out yet at this time but maybe by the time you're watching the video it will and so the problem that we're going to look at today is essentially an exercise in the theory of power series uh, it's a very potent theory it drives a lot of uh, sort of the higher levels of what's called mathematical analysis uh, it's the basis of taylor's theorem which i won't get into i just want to show you how quirky power series are how interesting they are through a problem that i liked solving yesterday when i was attempting the paper myself um yeah and let's get into it so if my memory serves right and i hope it does the problem was sum over n is equal to 1 to infinity right an infinite sum you've seen some of them what is this sum where the sum end is n into 3 by 4 to the power 2 n minus 2 this was a, a numerical type question where there was a little box and you had to input the answer whatever it came to if it was uh, you know and you had to round it up to two decimal places so if your answer is pi you would say 3.14 so this is the problem uh pause the video and try it on your own it's a very nice problem so yeah right and there is a cheeky trick that happens here and i will immediately introduce you to to it but i will get into power series after this i'll develop the theory and come back to the problem the main thing you want to notice here is that this 2n minus 2 is kind of a wash a much better way of writing this is n into 9 by 16 to the power n minus 1 2 n minus 2 is nothing but 2 into n minus 1 right and what do we know a to the power bc is a to the power b or to the power c that's just how exponents work it's a generalization of the fact that a uh, that when you multiply exponents they add so it's just that so that's all i've done here i've taken the 2 uh, out and written it like this you might ask what's the advantage The advantage is that this is a waste. It's a nice form. It looks like n times x to the n minus one, and you might know that this is the derivative of x to the power n. So, wishfully thinking, if I had instead this much simpler series, nine by sixteen to the power n, you would know what to do, right? Why would you know what to do? Because you have seen. a geometric series right if i asked you what is 1 plus half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 16 and so on you would quickly say it's 2 right why uh, generally what do we have if you have the geometric series 1 plus a plus a square and so on this is equal to 1 by 1 minus a and this actually only works for mod a less than 1 or uh a in the interval minus 1 to 1 the open interval so even if you plug in you know a is equal to 1 obviously it does work the series diverges goes to infinity 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 doesn't converge anywhere it doesn't the partial sums you know if you just look at the uh the series up to a certain point you could see that they seem to be getting closer and closer to obviously for a series like this that doesn't happen so we say the series diverges doesn't go anywhere. Uh yeah, and so this only obviously happens for mod a less than 1, which is not of any concern to us. 9 by 16 is less than 1. So you would promptly say, "Oh, this is just 1 by 1 minus 9 by 16, which is 16 by 7." All good. That's not what our problem is unfortunately. It's the derivative of that. The term is the derivative. So what do we do about that? This is where the power of power series comes in, no pun intended. generally uh, a what is a power series i do not want to get into the analytic technicalities uh, here 
uh, it's not very hard to do, but I'd have to to do it right. I would have to do a lot of stuff. So I will only go over the basics and go over the main result. So what what is a power series? I can find that for you. A power series is a function which is essentially an infinite polynomial. A polynomial, you know what a polynomial is, has some maximum degree. It's a n x n, uh, a n x to the power n, and then you know terms of lesser degree. What happens if you don't put that limit that it must like stop at some maximum degree? If you let it go on, if you just keep taking higher and higher powers of x, that's what I mean by an infinite polynomial. So specifically, outside of this radius of convergence, this function doesn't mean anything for real numbers, or for that matter, for complex numbers. Because if you plug in a number like that, the series doesn't go anywhere. It goes to infinity. But in the radius of convergence, it's super nice. It's differentiable as many times as you like, and it differentiates exactly the way you want it to. It also integrates exactly the way you want it to. It's very, very nice. Functions like these, functions for which you have power series development, such as sine x, are called analytic functions, and they are exceptional value. But that's just trivia. The point is that not only is f differentiable, the derivative of x, right, the differential of this function, uh, is exactly what you expect. A0 is a constant, so it dies. Uh, A1x is just A1. A2x squared is 2A2x. Uh, you know, A3x cubed is 3A3x squared, and so on. Uh, and you might have noticed a trend by now, which is that um, generally the coefficient of uh, x to the n is n plus 1 times an plus 1. Uh, if you flip that, um, the coefficient of uh, the, the, the term in the series which has this as the coefficient is, so generally, my series f prime x looks like uh, n a n x to the n minus 1, right? And it's, uh, it starts at 1 to infinity. That's what the derivative is. And it exists, and it also converges. So if you plug in a real number between 0 and r, it will go somewhere. It's not going to blow up. Power series are that nice. For us, what does this mean? Also, they're even nicer. So my point is that for functions which already have a nice form and also a power series, differentiation works exactly the way you want it. So 1 plus x plus x squared in the interval minus 1 to 1, we know that it's 1 by 1 minus x. Hence, if I take a derivative, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared and so on, this is the derivative of 1 by 1 minus x. You can differentiate both sides and it will work perfectly. So, this is just a user chain rule. 1 by t, the derivative is minus 1 by t square. But here we have a minus sign in front of x, so that minus sign goes away here by chain rule. This is just 1 by 1 minus x whole square, right? And this converges, like th if you plug in a number between minus 1 and 1, it makes sense, it works. And that's exactly what we have. Go back to the problem, we had this, right? n times x to the n minus 1. Look at this. This is nothing but sum over n times x to the n minus 1 and runs from 1 to infinity. Perfect. So our answer is just, look at this, right? Our answer is just what would happen if you plugged in 9 by 16 into both sides of the equation, right? So 1 plus 2 into 9 by 16 plus 3 into 9 by 16 squared, which is what our expression is, is equal to 1 by 1 minus 9 by 16 whole square, which is equal to 16 squared by 7 squared. Uh, it is a natural, uh, it is a numerical type, but thankfully we have these on-screen calculators on the computer-based test, so I didn't have to worry too much about calculating it on the spot. You could do it and the answer would come out to roughly 5.22. It is 5.22 because uh, you were supposed to answer up to two decimal places, so this would have been your answer. It's my understanding, at least. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope you learned something about Power Series. Uh, in a few days, at the time of making of this video, the entire paper will come out. 
those inter interested can take a look at it. Uh, there's lots of nice problems on the paper. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Bye-bye.